The Swordsmith Village is an arc that shows one of the biggest twists in the history of Demon Slayer. This is the arc that will show us that Demon Slayers can really defeat Upper Moons. This is a long arc which has its beginning in chapter 98 and the end in chapter 129 of the manga. And now with this video, we'll begin this journey by these subsequent chapters. This series, I will actually organize it in a unique playlist only for itself. And it'll be very important to watch according with the order of the playlist, so you won't get lost in the middle of the battles. Since this arc has two simultaneous battles and with the participation of at least five slayers, including Nezuko and two upper demons, and one of them divides himself into several parts. So if you don't watch it following the order, it'll be a mess. And if you want to buy the Demon Slayer manga, you can check the description where I'll link down below the best prices for you. Doing it, you'll support our work and encourage us to produce a better content. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel so you won't lose any new video. And now let's start the Swordsmith Village arc. Akaza, the Upper Moon 3, arrives at the Infinity Castle. In front of him, we can see Nakimi with her Bilwa, commanding the castle. Beside him, we see a vase, which is where Gyoku, the Upper Moon 5, is shown. He gives his greetings to Akaza and tells him that he thought the Upper Moon 3 was the one who had died. Soon after, we see Hantengu, the Upper Moon 4, who was hidden in one of the corners of the castle. While shivering, he says that it has passed 113 years since the last Upper Moon's meeting, which was really scary. Akaza ignores Kyoko and Hantengu and asks Nakimi where was Muzan. She replies that he hadn't arrived yet. So Akaza changes the question and talks about the Upper Moon 1. After all, he couldn't be dead. At the moment of Nakimi's answer, Doma arrives at the castle and hugs Akaza, as if he were a great friend of him. But in the middle of this excitement of Doma, Akaza punches him in the face. Apparently, these two did not get along. After this fight, Nakimi answers Akasa's question, saying that the Upper Moon One had already arrived at the castle for a long time and that he was standing there even before Akasa's arrival. The Upper Moon One then says his first words. I am here. Mr. Muzan has arrived. Right behind Akaza, Muzan Kibutsuji was doing some experiments, and here's where the Upper Moon's meeting began. Muzan Kibutsuji starts the meeting by announcing the death of the Upper Moon 6, Taki and Gyutaro. Muzan says that Gyutaro was useless and that he had too much humanity inside him, and that's why he was defeated. While Muzan was speaking, Doma was trying to get noticed, but he was totally ignored by the King of the Demons. Then Muzan asks where the Yubuya Sheik family was and why he hasn't gotten his hands on the blue spider lily yet. At the moment, all the moons lamented and apologized to their master. However, Gyoku said something different. He said he had a clue which could reach Muzan's expectations. The demon's king got a bit angry by that statement from the Upper Moon 5 and said that he hadn't even confirmed the clue. How could he say he was reaching his expectations? Muzan then asks for a greater devotion from the Upper Moons and orders Kyoku and Hantengu to confirm the clue they have found. And this was the end of the meeting of the Upper Moon. Doma asked to go along with Kyoko and Hantengu on the mission that Muzan had asked for, but without any answer, he got another punch from Akaza, who told him to stop interfering in Muzan's orders. Right after the punch, Akaza's hand was cut off and by his side was standing the Upper Moon 1, Kokoshibo. He told Akaza to stop destroying the demon hierarchy and told him that if he had anything against Doma, he should challenge him to a blood battle and then take the Upper Moon 2 role. Doma made fun of Akaza at this point, but he was ignored by both Akaza and Kokoshibo. Apparently, Upper Moon 1 had some master-student relationship with the Upper Moon 3. And then Nakimi closed the Infinity Castle, sending Doma home and Kyoko and Hantengun on a mission. 
While this was happening, Tenjiro, after recovering from the damage he suffered during the battle in the entertainment district, he received several letters from Haganizuka, his swordsmith. In these letters, he said that he would no longer make swords for Tenjiro, and he also offended our slayer several times. So, Tenjiro decided that he should go to the swordsmith village to talk to Haganizuka and convince him to make a new sword. A few days later, Tenjiro leaves. The path to the swordsmith village is encrypted in an extremely complex way. The slayers are transported by Kakushis. Each Kakushi does a part of the way and delivers the slayer to the next Kakushi. The paths taken by the Kakushis are guided by the crows, and both are frequently changed. The slayer who is being transported is also blindfolded, and has his sense such as hearing and smell plugged, so the village cannot be located anyway. So Tanjiro was taken to the swordsmith village where a great battle will be waiting for him. That's it guys, this was our first video about the swordsmith village, the next arc that'll be shown in the anime. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and wait for the next episode, where we'll see a polemic scene involving our love Hashira, Mitsuri Kanroji. But no more spoilers about it. Thanks for all and see you next time.